mom is the most passionate, the most loyal. Her heart is, is probably the biggest heart, uh, you know, that I've ever been around. A lot of her is in me. On May 2nd, 1990, Paul George's mother, Paulette, gave birth to her only son. She and Paul's father raised him and his two sisters, Teosha and Portola, in Palmdale, California, a small city near the Mojave Desert, approximately 90 minutes north of Los Angeles. My mom was the strict one. My father would let us live a little bit. Uh, my mom was the one that, was, that would lay the hammer down. You know, she was just parenting us, you know, the right way. Well, as a kid, everywhere she went, he went. I mean, he would hold her hand all the time. He was a pest. <laughs> and because I'm closer in age with him, I always got in trouble for things that he did. It was kind of the Reggie Miller, Cheryl Miller story, where, you know, the sister was the star of the town, and, you know, everybody recognized who she was, and, you know, the whole time growing up, I was known as Tiosha's little brother. We played a lot of games. The first time that you beat her, mm -hmm. how did that come about? I think I kind of set it up. <laughs> you knew the time? Yeah, come? I knew the time. I, I was like, you know, it's, it's, this is it. Um, and it, I think it was after one of my sister's practices. And uh, she was a little worn out. She was tired. Every shot that I took, it was like block. Every, like, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't shoot over him. It was crazy. At that point, I started getting upset. And my mom's like, you know, calm down. You know, you guys just playing around. And I'm like, no, we're not playing around. Like, this is serious. <laughs> and yeah, he beat me. When Paul was just six years old, the family received devastating news. You know, I, I remember my mom getting into a car and, you know, I, I just noticed she wasn't feeling you know, it, it wasn't my mom, you know, she was, she was very quiet. She just kept saying, you know, something's wrong with me, something's wrong with me. And I saw her rush into the car and, you know, eventually she was going to the hospital. You know, I didn't know, you know, it was a stroke, a blood clot. You know, it took me a while to even get past that stage. I just knew that she was sick. The doctors told us that, you know, she was pronounced dead. Um, and, you know, it, it was, it's a feeling you never want to have. I do remember someone coming in and saying, um, like, they were just kind of hysterical, saying, you know, she's gone, she's gone. I mean, to hear that your mother, I mean, I was close to my mom. I was a mama's boy, uh, you know, and, and for my mom, for me to hear that, you know, it, it, a piece of me, you know, died. At that moment, I was totally paralyzed. I was just a vegetable. I was not moving arms, legs, just laying in the bed. But Paul's mother defied the odds, surviving after two blood clots resulted in a debilitating stroke, leaving her partially paralyzed to this day. I couldn't talk. I lost my vision in my left eye. It's just totally disabled, you know. They got her back, and then, you know, she fought through it. She fought all the way through it. So when you realized that she was going to be OK, what was that feeling like? It was still tough to see my mom, you know, because she couldn't talk. She didn't really know we was there. It was kind of like seeing a baby. I can hear things. I just couldn't talk. But when I look into their eyes, I can see the fear, like, what's going to happen? What is going to happen to mom? They brought a hospital bed into our house. And, you know, we put her in, in, into our living room. And, you know, that was, I, I used to make my bed, you know, right next to her on the carpet. Just anything she needed, you know, I was there for. You know, I was middle school, elementary, you know, so I had a little time on my hands. Um, you know, so I was the one that was her, her bedside assistant. So he would always come to the bedside and rub my hand, and I, I couldn't feel but the right side was coming back slow, so I was able to always lift my hand up and, and try and grab his hand, and he would pick it up. You gonna be okay, Mom? And I'm like, and I'm just looking at him like, yeah. Paul said what happened to his mother led him to become less social around other kids. The young boy needed an outlet, and he found it on the hardwood. Basketball was like my outlet. 
taking care of my mom was, you know, my job, um, I felt like, and then playing basketball was kind of like my piece. I was like a, a kid in a candy store. If I do something, if I just picked up the fork, it was like, smile. All the kids would say, there she go. She just smiling all the time. When she tell the story, you know, I, I, I just, you know, the same smile I got now, I mean, that's the smile I have, you know, when she tells that story. Um, you know, because I was right there. You know, I was, I, was, I was with her through the whole way. What's Mother's Day mean to you guys? Mother's Day is all about my mom. Whatever she wants to do, you know, that's her day. You know, we, we drop everything that's on our schedule, you know, to make sure our mama is, is, you know, got everything she wants on that day. You know, that's our queen.